So I wanted to address something that we discussed at the last lesson. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was it was part of the discussion. And this is why sometimes you just have to <clears throat> just recognize that the teacher is going to provide you the information in the way that will help you most, right? And when and when you get into teaching, if you do, you you you'll you'll understand, right? <clears throat> like there's certain things you you don't get into with a student. They they're at the beginning. It wouldn't make any sense. It would be doing them a real disservice, really. Uh, but we talked about <clears throat> <clears throat> we talked about excuse me we talked about. Uh, well, we talked about the grip. You've been kind of surfing the web, listening to drummers speak in other languages. And the only reason you know what they're talking about is every once in a while they'll say, and Spivak, or Spivak, you'll hear Spivak. You won't understand anything else <laughs> except that word. And the fact that they have maybe a practice pad and they've taken a magic marker and drawn a line in the middle finger. I've seen that too. I don't know if you've seen that video. <laughs> and and so, oh, okay. So, uh, and, and so we see all kinds of things on the internet and <laughs> people that <clears throat> maybe never really studied with Murray or, or with Dick or, or people that did, but, you know, didn't finish the full course have ideas that, that might not really be connected with the technique in reality. And uh, so we, we've seen we've seen guys talking about or maybe that yeah, talking about it and playing with a pointed first finger. We've seen all kinds of things, right? We've seen all kinds of arm uh, involved, an upstroke. I've seen all kinds of things that, that um, they're not wrong, but they're not they're not this technique. And uh, so with that in mind, you discussed the idea that, you know, I said, just let this, just the stick stops dead. And, and, and you questioned that. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, I get it. Uh, but I, so I wanted to just kind of hip you to my thinking with regards to that. And also how it relates to the grip. Okay, because as Marie Spivak would say, if I if I ask you to jump off a roof. I mean, are you you're not going to do? You, I mean, I have to prove to you what I'm talking about, right? And so, and then you have to prove it to yourself. It's, oh yeah, it works. It's true. <laughs> now you're working on your singles. We just had a conversation about your inspection of why perhaps your left is seemingly not able to keep up with your right. That may or may not be true. Maybe it is. Okay. Uh, and you were you talked you said a bunch of things that were really insightful. Right. And uh, at, at talking about the arm that which we I've discussed, but now you're really seeing, oh it's true. I am using my arm. So that means it's not a wrist turn. Remember what Richard Martinez says? The whole technique, it's all a wrist turn. Buddy Rich says it's all in the wrist. That's actually true. It really is. Okay. So you tapped into that. It's like you're not turning your wrist. <clears throat> okay. So let me let me try to help you with some of this now. At this now, this doesn't mean we're gonna go fast, because I know you just want to go really fast. And then you'll know it's working, but you're not going to get the speed until you really break it down, which is what you've been doing, which is awesome, right? You sit there and you meditate and you, you mention, oh, well, then, I, then I'm going to compensate by, and you're right. Now, now suddenly you're going to need to use, if you're pumping and it's not working and, and you're not applying the force, the lever arm in, 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 uh, in, a way, in a way that it provides you the efficiency you're looking for, then you're going to start to search and other things start to happen and the whole thing becomes confusing. 
<coughs> so let, let me hit you with this, okay? So in, in the right, we'll, we'll start with the right, okay? He's going to hold the stick with the grip. Right. And you're right. You want to let your arm hang. That was good. Come up. Got that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn up to the ceiling. We're turn our wrist up to the ceiling. Okay. Now, just the wrist, not the arm. That's right. But it does react, doesn't it? You really turn, it will react. The arm will do its thing, but in proportion. If if you're mimicking it, you're not really turning your wrist. Okay. It just it does react when it comes straight up. So we're, we look like this. I suggest you just come straight up. You don't don't come up incrementally, as though you're actually going to play we're going to turn up and you get to about here arm is hanging by your side right? and it's really a three finger grip my other fingers don't have anything to do with it really but they're i have those fingers so you know, i could hold them off but i just leave them alone but i know that it's really a three finger grip right? that you're aware of Okay, not bad. It's okay. Now, give me a, give me a right profile. Okay, so it's, see, it's not, it's not quite right. What? Watch mine. Look, remember in the, uh, in the speedback Louis Belson video, and he, and now, now this is a throw and. And Murray has Louis cock his wrist, and he, but he comes up so slow that the stick doesn't come away from the palm. And, and then Murray says, and the stick, and now the stick is away from the, now the stick is away, just coming away from the palm. I'm like that. So by the time you're here, Ralph, there's a space between, I can't even see your space. Why is that? See how you can see my, why don't I see yours? Are you twisted in a funny way? What do you mean by space where? Huh. Just, uh, turn turn the other way. Let me let me take a look. Is is your butt end touching the palm of your hand? My what? Uh yeah. Yeah, see that, that see that's what I'm trying to tell you. I, I know we're I don't know how many miles away across the pond, <clears throat> but that's what I'm trying to tell you. See it comes away from the palm. Yeah, a little bit, but it's almost touching. No. It's away from the palm. Look how far away it is from the palm. I haven't opened my fingers. Yeah, why isn't yours doing that? Nope, that's not it. And that's your right. That's your good hand for singles. You have no sing. You 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 won't have any crescendo strokes. My bodies are different, right? <laughs> you know, right? Because ultimately, we're gonna go we're going to end up going to arms and shoulders for crescendo strokes. Hey, if I continue this in this direction, then obviously it's going to come away. But if it's like this, then it's like this. It's, this, this, this it's certainly not against the palm, but there's not as much space as yours, that's for sure. But. There should be. So you, we need, you need to figure that out. That's not the technique. This is not the technique, even though just a little bit away. And that's not it. Yeah, you come all the way up here. It's away from the palm. It's not the size of your fingers, but like I mean, you may have bigger, bigger finger size. Like my fingers are small. I don't know. No. Now it's starting to look better. Now you'll notice. Go ahead and take your first finger and thumb off the stick. That's better, by the way. No, keep it straight up to the ceiling. Straight up to the ceiling. Straight up to the ceiling. No, don't go further back. Straight to the ceiling. Yeah. It's away from the palm, right? You, you can put your ba your middle finger, ring finger, and baby finger on the stick. You could, you could have it there. Yeah, you can wrap it around. It's still away from the palm. Keep it straight up. Don't go further back. Stay with me now, Ralph. Yeah. Not bad. See? Better. Now, I want you to let go of your first finger and thumb. Just take them off. 
Oh, the stick is going to fall. <laughs> go ahead and do it. There you go. That's good. That means that you're not clutching with your back fingers. See, that is the technique. So when you're in this position now, when you've come up and you're in this position, it really, it, go ahead and point your first finger and see what happens. Well, this will prove to you what, no, that's not what happens. I mean, I, I guess. But, well, here's what happens when I point my first finger, watch. Let's see what it does. As soon as I, as soon as I, ouch. As soon as I point my first finger, I get, you see it's away from the palm? Mm -hmm. This is why you can't point your first finger in this technique. You'll never be able to come up this high and play it with this volume with this technique. As soon as I point my first finger, stick comes into the palm. And then, back, now the back fingers have to grab. Yeah, I guess, or the other, the other two fingers will have to compensate, I guess. That's what happens to me. As soon as I point my first finger, it promotes this. Because really the only thing holding the stick up is the thumb and the first finger. You realize that? The only thing, go ahead and just do this. Just first finger and thumb. No, now I want you to put your first finger and thumb on properly. With this, with first. the Wilson, right? It, it's Will, Wilson would say it's the first finger and thumb are the guide, and it's firm, comfortable, and constant. Okay? You can just take your fingers off. Look how I've taken mine off. Yeah, I just opened my hand like like a pianist. I almost look like I could play the piano, right? Yeah. I keep them all crunched up. I just I've just taken them off. Look, it's tea time. We're going to have tea. Afternoon tea. Right? Just got that. Yeah, yeah, you should know. Right? You, you, know, the look. you know the look. Okay, right? Just, just take them off nice and comfortable. Just, just be normal with them. Don't be stiff. Okay, now, now you can just put them back on with the speed back grip. Okay, there you go. Don't pull the stick into the palm. Keep it pointing straight to the ceiling. The only thing really holding the stick up is the first finger thumb. That's why you're not going to point your first finger. It's completely spoiler. Okay, so now we're up here. We got it. Now, <clears throat> now the gig is we don't want to get to that position by using our arm. You're aware that the arm will react. So you got your grip. Feels different down here, doesn't it now? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you, get, you just don't throw that away. You can take your first finger and thumb off now. Go ahead, take them off. Yeah, I guess you could put your first finger. You'll be fooled. Sure, why not? You see, because it's laying in, now it's laying in the hand because the stick's in a different position. Okay, go ahead and put the thumb and first finger back on. Firm, comfortable, and constant, but not so tight that you pull the stick out of the out of the hand. You want it laying in the hand with a guide that's firm, comfortable, and constant. You can bend this the second knuckle of your first finger just a little more. There. Find the floor, find the floor, is your floor. Now we're going to come up. Okay, and then we're going to come down. Not bad. We're gonna come up. Come on, just come up. Just, we're just going slow. Got your first finger thumb. Your baby finger's off, but that's okay. You can do that. I could do it like this too, you know. But I don't want to pull my fingers off, why? I know it's a three finger grip and I'm going to let the whole thing fall. There. <clears throat> now it has a feeling of stopping dead, doesn't it? it? Has a feeling. Don't let it bounce up like that. Just, you did it great. Yeah, just let it fall. Watch. Oh, I, I, sh I should start here. And then we're going to let it fall. And it just goes. Clunk. All right. Like you threw a duffel, it feels like uh, for me, it feels like you threw a, a, a duffel bag full of a sand, a big sandbag, you know, that, that they use to shore up during the storm. You drop it off a roof and it just goes clunk, just clunk, right? <clears throat> okay, but the gig is, is that you've got to get to here. This is the position you must get to. You don't throw your fingers open and you don't lead with your arm. It's a wrist turn. It's a wrist turn. It's a wrist turn. And it just collapses and stops. Not bad. 
They go, you want to get to here? I don't mind if you just hang out for just a minute to prove to yourself. There, they're here. There you go. See, it's easy. Stick to stop spikes. There's, there's nothing to do. You're, <clears throat> there's nothing to do, is there? What are you doing? You're just letting it fall, right? And you're, and, <clears throat> and you're actually turning your wrist and just letting the whole thing collapse as you turn your wrist. It's good. Now get to the top and hang for just a sec, one more time, so I know. You have to memorize that position. I let it fall. Good. Okay, now, <clears throat> check it out. Now, and, and they're all, and I'm not going to get into this with you. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I just, I'm just going to help you understand this particular aspect based on your your interest last lesson with regards to, well, how does a stick really stop dead? Okay, I get it. <clears throat> but you have a different conception you'll, as you'll, you're about to see. Okay, so there's there's different iterations of this and, and we'll get into that. You know, I've actually discussed it with you at the last lesson and I had you playing multiple rebounds, okay? Right now I'm taking you down to here. Now, come on down here and as I mentioned, notice how different the stick feels in your hand. It feels much heavier, doesn't it? Doesn't the stick feel heavy? Mm. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel it more in the fulcrum, can't you? Now you can really feel it laying in the fulcrum. It's different up here. There is a fulcrum. It's a three-finger grip, but it doesn't feel. Whoa! I feel all that weight of the yeah, stick. This feels heavier when it's down, right? What's that now? It kind of feels heavier when it's down versus when it's up, which doesn't make much sense, but it is. It exactly. feels like yeah. it's like the baseball player that get, takes his bat and gets underneath it. Wrap. There's no weight there. If you keep it perfectly balanced, <laughs> right? Now you're holding this big thing. Now you now you've got to hold this thing up. You can't get underneath it in the same way and leverage it against it this way. Now you're holding all of this weight. But that doesn't mean we don't have a three finger grip. It doesn't mean our our first finger and thumb are firm, comfortable, constant. You can bend that middle knuckle. Dick Wilson taught me if you bend that middle knuckle, notice it also pr promotes the bending of the tip, the first knuckle of the first finger. It brings it underneath just a little more. Yeah. All right. So okay, now you have the now you have that. So yeah, you you, you want to maintain a certain channel here that's consistent. Not bad. It's okay. Not bad. Okay. <laughs> and flat of the thumb, right across from the first finger. And then you've got your middle finger. First joint, middle finger. For identifying this the focal. Okay, so so now how are you gonna play a single? Feels different, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? So now watch, if we just play one note. Feels different too. And we're just down here, look, look. Wait to this one, right? So go ahead and play from parallel. Does it feel like it's stopping dead? Go ahead, try. Yes. It does? Look. You have to go down. Now it's down to come up. Look, we're going down, touching, and then we stop it. Look, look, there. Down. What? You see? You're stopping in parallel. It's different, isn't it? It yeah. just feels different, doesn't it? 
yeah, graph, it's not stopping dead, but it's a single. What's really happening? What's happening is you're always coming back to floor. In this technique, we train to stop at the floor, half an inch to an inch, parallel beat to butt end. Now go ahead and bring the stick all the way up like you did before. And let, up, and, and let it come down. You don't, you stopped it parallel. Now it feels like it's not, you don't feel that, do you? You don't feel getting to the surface. All that force and going, oh, now I'm going to bring it back up. It just goes clunk and we stop it at the floor. It feels like it's stopping dead. It feels like. In reality, you were thinking it must be bouncing. I'm not thinking that way. See, I'm actually getting to the surface and bringing it up to parallel. <laughs> there you go. Okay, ta-da. I just saw the light bulb go off. It's not what you thought. It's completely different than your conception. And you were thinking as a physicist, remember? And I told you someone wrote Richard Wilson and with diagrams of cannons. It was a physicist and said, the fulcrum can't be in the middle finger. And, and, and Dick went, oh, well. <laughs> OK, now, now, now play from parallel. That's it. Ta-da. All right? Wanted you to know that. We'll, we'll get into it further. But that's what's happening in reality. We train in this technique to always wait at the floor, okay? All right, so you should work on that. Work on that in both hands, left and right, okay? All right, now, <coughs> good. This is a big deal for you. Learning this was good. Now, now, you, now you have the potential for dynamics all the way up to here, maximum risk turn. And you have the ability to just turn from here. Just like that. Uh -huh. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, stick control. Yeah. Okay, you have that out? Indeed. Yeah, I had you 72 to 80, just like Richard Wilson had me. 72 to 80. But Murray had me at 80 to 84. They didn't always agree on tempos, but we're going, we're, we're 72 to 80. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So. What should I start with, 72 or 80? Go ahead and put yeah. it at 80. Okay. Now. Uh, It's going to feel different again. See, doing that, you know, if you know what it feels like, it feels like it's stopping dead. I don't land and bring it. Rip. I'm not thinking I've got to land. It feels like it's stopping dead. That's the quality that it has. Okay. So go ahead. I know I had you play to a quarter note and then to a half note. Let's just play to a half note. Let's let's play the classic page five as Bivak and Wilson would have you play. Right? See how important it is to find the floor? Because that's really where you're always going to stop. You're playing it the quarter note. That's cool. We can do. We can start with that because that's what I had you doing. No, it was both. I think quarter and and. You're, you're, you're playing. You're playing at half speed. To a quarter note. So so you're playing eight notes. You're not in cut time. See what like? Let's take our time. No, just stay with me here. See, you don't realize how hard this is to do properly. You want to go fast. That's not how you can get it. Turn less high. Just turn a little less high. Just, just, just to hear it. See? Now, now you'll notice. You know, maybe, maybe I did you a disservice. 
let's rewind just real quick. I just want you to feel this in your left hand. I want to make sure your left hand feels this. That's yeah. really yeah. in your problem, child. <laughs> it's my responsibility to address. You don't have to do anything weird. I know you broke your finger, the baby finger, isn't it? it so, but right. So just, it, it just leave it alone. If it's, you, you can wrap around the stick or touch the yeah, stick. It's, it's okay. It just has a bit of this space. That's because it's broken. It's not really, right. if I have to do it like this, I'm kind of forcing it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. But uh, what we know is it's a three finger grip. And the only thing we're holding the stick up in this position is the first finger and thumb. But God, yeah. okay. And then, right, so you're just going to let it fall. See, just stops dead. We know that, oh, don't let it bounce around. Don't let it bounce around. It didn't bounce around when you just turned from here, did it? Look, look, it's bouncing around. You have to have control all the way through the spectrum. All the way through the spectrum. You have to have control all the way through the spectrum. Okay. Uh, you're pumping your arm. You're pumping your arm. That's why you need to practice this and make sure that you're not mimicking it with your arm. You can watch. Try it one more time. Boom. Boom. No, just don't come up slowly. Remember I told you? Just come up naturally. Let it come away from the palm like I described and stop for a minute. You're just doing over and over instead of... That's the meditation we're looking for. That's your. This is your locus. There you go, and let it collapse. Boom, right into the center. No bouncing. Perfect. Good. Okay, you have that, right? Mm -hmm. go ahead and go ahead and just and go ahead and just turn from here and just remind yourself of what this feels like. And you don't have to point your first finger. Remember, you can that second knuckle. If you bend that second knuckle a little bit more, it'll put you in the perfect position. There you go. Beautiful. That's a beautiful grip right now. Just do one. Just be at the there. Go on. Tap. Just one tap. There. See? Hit the floor. Now, it's not bouncing around at all. And it doesn't bounce around all the way up here. It won't bounce around up here. It won't bounce around up here. It doesn't bounce around. And it has a quality of stopping dead, even though we know that at a micro a fast speed video camera. You, you probably would see coming back to here, <laughs> but not bouncing around. It's not landing and, and flying around. It's not doing that. Okay, so it's different than what you thought. Okay, you're feeling in your left too. Look at your grip. It's just as good as the right. The two are in total equal footing right now. Whether you believe it or not, I just proved it to you. You proved it to yourself. I'm glad someone does believe it. <laughs> now, when we play stick control and we're just turning and we're turning at half the speed but what is it it, it doesn't matter really we're, we're here tap 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 you're, you're playing it to a quarter note see see, see, see what it is now it, it's not arm even when we come up this high it's certainly not arm. Here, I'll, I'll show you another thing. Richard Martinez hit me to this. Now you know that you know that the uh, this might help. You know that in actuality, if we don't hold anything tight and we turn that high from the wrist, the the arm will react, mm -hmm. not as much as you think. So just for fun, get, show me the floor. Uh, yeah, you can stay in that position there. I, I want to show you, but you can, you can stay like that. Now, I want you to keep your arm. I don't want you to let it follow. In other words, you're actually going to interfere with what it would really do. Just to prove to yourself something and turn all the way up. And go higher than this. You can go this high. Come on. Can't go higher. Well, come on, stretch it out. I know see, it's, it's a little tight. That's what I mean, right? But see, that's that swatch. Come back down. Do it again. All the way up. See, that's pure wrist. Come down. Okay. That's wrist. 
Right. Now, if we really wanted to come up and let everything be loose, it's still pure wrist if you know what you're doing. And you see, the arm doesn't move that better. See, your arms move less. There you go. So when we're down here playing stick control to a quarter note, and we're just going tap, 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 there now it does. Now the arm does feel like what you were just what you were just doing. Yeah. It, sure. it, it won't get tight because we're not trying to come up that high and hold it down. It'll um, feel it'll feel like like this. It's just a pure wrist turn. So keep that in mind. First finger, second knuckle, and go ahead. Show me what a wrist turn looks like in the left. Now we're going to start. Left, we're going to have the left teach the right. Now just one, just one. You already let, lost your first finger. I didn't see it. <laughs> it's just, it's still with you. Good, I didn't. <laughs> exactly. Okay. No, I just want one. See, you, you, you love to do that rap. You're like, oh, yeah, I got it, I got it. No, no. Ah, oh, now you got it. See, I want you to take your time and identify things. Come on up. Or higher or on up. That was okay. Three inch turn. There you go. Come on, do that again. See, your arm, your arm is just flat, right? It's not, it's not coming, coming up. No, no. that's the of the arm. Right? It's pure wrist. There. It has, it has that feeling. It doesn't it have the doesn't it have the feeling the same kind of there's more force involved here, but watch, watch. Feel that feeling of where it stops dead. Now if I just turn this side, let's see, it has that same feeling where I don't feel what I feel like when I turn from parallel and I left to lift it back up. Oh, it'll feel very similar to that stop dead feeling. Boom. That's what you're gonna feel. Don't force. You didn't force, look, you didn't force when you were up this high and you let it fall. Don't don't force. Just lift it up and let it let it come back down. And and turn your wrist. It's it is as 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 I told you at the beginning, it's easier. And I, I totally get what you're saying. I'm just saying not forcing it down, it's easier to feel when you're doing rebounds, not just a single stroke, oddly enough. For me, it's because you're not doing anything. It really has a kind of quality like you're following the stick. But you're turning your wrist. There you go. Don't force it. Just turn. Just like you didn't force when you came up higher. There you go. Don't let lose your three finger grip. Come up and stop. A little. No, 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 no. That was good. Not bad. Hey, body just went whoop. So I just want you to come up and stop here now. Okay. See how relaxed that is? That stick is just laying in your hand. It's different than when it's all the way up, isn't it? Now it has a different quality. Even though you have a three finger grip, you can really feel the weight of the stick now. You can feel more of the weight of the stick. Not as much as when you're all the way down. Now just turn from there and don't force. Let it collapse. Just like you when you're there. Boom. That's it. You just do two of those. Do two of those. There. And do two in the other hand. Now I want tap, tap, wrist turns. We're, we're still stick control. Okay. Uh, just nice and slow without a metronome. Yeah, and two in the other hand. Okay. Don't point your first finger in the left. Don't slam. Nice and easy. It's a wrist turn. Good man, see? There's that feeling, it just stops. Okay, can you, can you, can you speed that up a little? Turn higher, just right, maintain the same height of the turn. Keep them even. Always to the same height. Always letting it collapse. It'll always have consistent force on the way down. Uh, it up a little more. Don't change anything. Just a little tiny bit faster. Nothing. And how clean that sounds. Listen how clean that sounds. So don't lose your height. Don't lose the floor on your left. As it flaps and have that feeling of stopping dead twice. 
Okay, go ahead with the metronome on. I also thought about what you said regarding only moving up, not downwards. I think that's also that also did help me a lot into just focusing just on lifting the wrist and then just letting everything just lift. So it's always going up, never going down. That that does make a lot of sense. Anyway. Remember, you're turning in both directions. And really about what you're feeling. Don't put your first finger in the left. I have that quality of now I have now I have you playing now we're playing strokes. Fact, we'll go to four, so you, you're leading with your left. But which it's double snap. work on stick control and uh, as single as uh, all on the wrist. Well, the single is just this, right? The single is just this. All you have to do is stay at the surface just a little bit longer. If you grip, it'll it'll rock. Rock over that fulcrum. It'll it'll also travel through this channel, right? It travels through the channel. Yep. When you say yuck, but is it? You see, see, do you see this channel? Can you see into here? Mm -hmm. Can you see into that channel? Yep. Right. right. Stick is rocking that channel. Yeah. You don't get to throw your fingers open. All you do is hold the stick and stay at the surface a little longer and maintain a, a nice three finger narrow fulcrum. So it's going to, it, it's a little similar, isn't it, to the playing skills in terms of the speed of the wrist turn. So let's do that. Let's, let's, uh, I'm going to modify it. Modified stick control. Uh, so if it works. So, like, just, 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 so go and put the metronome, metronome on at 80. You're going to play the motion for doubles. Because remember, when you're on the rebound, one wrist turn gives you two notes. So you're singles at, at the speed of the wrist turn that will turn into doubles. 
is it doubles rebound or double wrist? Double rebound, right? Yeah, what we're going, what we're doing is we're going from the motion of turning down, boom, they went no. And then when I when I say I want you to let, I want you to turn that into doubles. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. No, see, you're playing, you're playing the number of notes. I want you to make, I want you to play the motion that is required for one turn for two notes. You see? So it's gonna be half that speed, right? That is this. Okay, so so okay. What we're just working on. See how important it is? And it's just this. It's so relaxing. Look how relaxing this is. Rap. And I'm just going to turn that into doubles. You see, look how easy that is. Look! Oh my god. We got singles. We have singles, right? And we have the doubles. There's exercises in stick control further along that, that, that do this, by the way. But I'm not having you turn the page. I'm just. I'll just play doubles. Great exercise. Don't point your first finger in the left. You can't play doubles if you don't have singles. You're playing doubles in the left. Your problem hand is just fine. So that means you're starting to get the idea. Okay, start left. Just show me that you can do that left. Good hand. Yeah, good. Okay, now. <clears throat> Now we're going to move on to number number five, which really just a paradiddle. Now we haven't gotten to the paradiddle in the actual formal Spivak library of strokes. So, but I think I think you need to be in stick control. It's up to you, man. You're you're the teacher. Every student is different, and uh, there are formulas, but there are really no set formulas. And uh, <clears throat> so. Now, you don't have what is a little dot that Richard Wilson has actually marked my book with. Can you see the little dots? Yeah, kind of like an accent sort of, right? Right, it's a stenuto, I think it's called, something like that. And uh, that means it's not going to be an accent, but it's going to be a little louder. And the way we, in this technique, make it a little louder is by making a gentle throw. Okay. Now we get the throw. See, it's all going to come together. And before you know it, you'll boil the lobster. You know the lobster that doesn't know it's being slowly, it just happens without it being, it being aware of it? You're meant to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Let's take a look at it. We all know what a paradiddle is. Well, let's, let's keep it at 80. Um, because really the paradiddle has, it has a double in it, notice. Which is the speed of the doubles that you've just been playing. It has the speed throw and then Right. You, and then you have the left in between before the double and the right. So I mean, pretty, much, pretty much the same thing, but right. a bit phased, right? So it, it's after the lesson, I want you to, you can draw in a dot over the first right in the right iteration. 
and then dot on the first left. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Want you to play? So we go ahead and play it for me. Eight. Look at the metronome at eighty. So before that, just so I understand the motion. So it's going to be a throw, right? Gentle throw. And then you need to be. I know. I want you to put the metronome on. Okay. So the first left, so the second no, so the second left, uh, the first left is an upstroke, right? Well, that, that that's good. Okay. Right. That, that, that. I was I was going to hip you to. Okay. But is that right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Now. Take you to another place, but that was good. It was very good. See, you're analyzing music you're playing. So, go ahead. Is that clear to you? Yeah, it is clear to me. Not sure I can execute it well, but it's clear to me. Do this. See if I can copy it. Ah, I can't even do it. I'll, I'll just focus on the right hand. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, you could do it. Let's see. Ah, 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 Sure, why not? What? Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 
why not? But see what I want? See, and I, you should be able to do that too. If you really have control over the text. Stay with me though, Raf. So here's what we're doing, boy. Uh, 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 uh. I understand, uh, I understand. Okay, so can you do that? Yeah, I understand. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about right there. Yeah, you got the right that time. But what you don't want to do is with your arm. Okay, it's really a wrist turn. You're just going to get this. Okay. Yeah. Bring it. Bottom of the bead on the up. Uh, bottom of the bead. Bottom of the bead. Because you don't want. See if I can do it wrong. To demonstrate. Tip, 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 tip. Instead of bottom of the bead, bottom of the bead, bottom of the bead. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Okay. I want you to work on that. Not bad. I'm going to show you. I'm going to. I'm going to hit you to one more thing. Instead of going. Of the iterations of, of the paradigm, which, ha which happens, exercise six, seven, and eight. Mm -hmm. And by the way, <clears throat> well, let's just keep it simple. Let's just have you work on the paradigm, and then next lesson, we'll get into the iterations. Iterations don't typically involve a throw. This is a little different <laughs> for the dog. Well, I guess they could. I guess they could. I guess. Oh, yeah. So yeah, isn't it exactly just the same but offset? No. Right. You're just moving. Right. You're just right. Number seven. Number seven. You just start with the double instead of the throw, right? You're just. It's it. It's a. Uh, you're moving the stenute or the accent over. Yes. Okay. So you understand that. So if you want to play with that, you you understand that uh, wherever the right in the first iteration has a, a stenuto. You're, you're going to maintain so that in number six, the stenoto will be on the fourth note, the right. See that? Yeah. Right. On the seventh iteration, it will be on the third note, it'll be on the left. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And on, on the number eight, the stenoto will be also on the, on the left, but the, the second note. Okay. You understand it. But I want to get I want to get one more thing in here. Cool. So I'm just yeah. I'm just going to hit you to this, right? So uh, now what we're doing is we're getting to number nine. So I'm just, I'm out of the paradiddles now, and we're going to play three rights. Yeah, my arm in the left. Do you notice I pumped my arm in the left? I caught myself. There it is. See? Oh, nice look. Look how bouncy. So why? I have a question about that. Why do you do a Just you just return and let it bounce three times. Now what's that, Ralph? Why do you why do you do like in this specific one? Why are you doing a throw for the three notes when you could have just done a simple wrist turn for the three notes? Well, we could at this volume to help the student along. This technique, the throw provides a little bit of momentum to get you to the last note. Can try it if you can do that. Got you. So got you. Metronome on at 80, keeping it at 80. Yeah. The speed the speed can be helpful. It might be harder at 72. You wear that? I'm saying, especially with rebounds, right? <laughs> Don't point your first finger to the left. Go for it. Look 
come look, watch my throw, Ralph. Ralph, check it out. See it straight up and down, straight up and down, straight up and down. Yours doesn't. Yours wants to do this. Well, what are you doing? You're doing something like that. You're doing, go ahead and play. You're doing something where it doesn't go straight up and down. I haven't quite figured out what you're doing. Another question. So, so the third bounce is probably kind of an up, right? I got thinking. But we're looking for the bottom of the beat, aren't we? We can do it, we can do it both ways. Look. Or I could, I could make it an up, right? I could make it an up. But the gig is, see, it's slow enough, right? If you really have the skill, you, you don't need to make it an up. But it could be. But what has to happen is, you can't pull up with your arm and, and get the tip. You need the bottom of the bead. Okay, so try it again. It wasn't bad, but but I, but, and that's fine that you interrupted with a really good question. But what we're looking for is this. Watch. We want this to come straight up. It does this. Watch. Do do it with me. Do it with me. Why was that hard for you to just go to here? You want to come back down? Just go to here. Watch what happens. Just, just let it fall. Just come on, on, come out over here. You know, out to the side. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just let it fall. You, you could let it fall that way, but I, I just, just me, to re I'm, I'm looking for this. There you go. One, let, it down. Let, let it fall. Now ah, you're putting it down. Let it fall. Let it collapse. <laughs> oh, it's okay. See, that's all we're doing. Watch. We're just letting it fall. We're just letting it fall. It just goes boom. Nope. It goes boom. I get a note. How come you're not getting a note? I'm getting a note. And notice my note and the timing of the turn are in sync. You, you, you're doing this. Not much, but a little bit. You, you go. And then oh, go more. Okay, that's the different oh, thing. Oh, that it, might... Watch, it's just one motion. There you go. Now, you noticed your note was louder. Now you have a note. I understand what you're saying. We're not, up, we're not making an upstroke, but that'll help you. That's the feeling of how you go up for a throw. Now from there, throw. Now go on up. No, you didn't turn to the ceiling enough. Go on up. No, got to see. You don't want to stop here. You don't want to stop here and get to know this. You just always want to roll, blow through everything. Don't do that. Just get, get to this position. Right? Feel, feel that. And throw. There, better. See, you got here and now you have to turn your wrist. And maintain this grip and let it bounce. And then go up again. They now it's going straight up and down. You're not even thinking about your arm. What arm? There you go. Listen how nice and even that is. Okay. All right. So go ahead and play it one more time for me with the left. Oh. <laughs> okay. Said, you said you don't have any problems with your rebounds. Your left now your left is having more of a problem with rebounds because you're not really maintaining. It's that first finger. Yeah, it's that first finger. Look, look. Remember what it felt like to just go like like this. Remember you were playing two notes. We we're just playing two notes for uh, exercise uh, number three and four. The doubles on the rebound, right? You were getting two notes just fine. Remember? You maintained your grip. See? Now we're getting three notes. Do that for me. On the left. Got to get your grip together up front. Your first finger, it doesn't know what it's doing. It's firm, comfortable, constant. There you go. Keep it, keep that. that. Now when you come up, stop for a minute. Just stop. There, there. 
Feel how relaxed that is, right? Feel how just meditate. You know the free finger grip is in place. You don't have to do anything. Your fourth and fifth. All you're going to do is let that collapse onto the surface for three notes. I already do it for two. You prove that. There. See how your grip is? You didn't do anything. And all you're going to do is make a little throw and let it land for three notes. There you go. All right. Okay, I'm leaving you there. I'm le we're ending on a high note. Okay. There was a lot of stuff today. Sure. Let's get there. Okay. Very good. Now, to wrap things up. Uh, what, what Richard Wilson would say, and this is pertains to this lesson, very much so, because you felt a lot of really good things today. Right? And then it started to calm down and isolate certain things. And isolate certain things. We can experience things. We take our time. Before you know it, you're, you're at 80, playing, throwing for three. Not bad. Okay. And so what Richard Wilson would say is he'd say, once as you as long once you feel it the first once you feel it once, I hate to use a sentence that has the same word twice. After feeling it once, you'll feel it again. It's now part of you in some way. Remember that. Okay? So that was good. Take this to the practice pad and meditate and take your time. Just don't go blowing through it because you're actually feeling it today. Stop the uh, recording. Ah, Kevin.